Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. My name, of course, is Albert Potato, and here we check out the latest and the greatest strategy games each and every day of the week. Today I'm checking out Railroot, which is a tycoon management game where you play as the train dispatcher in charge of a network of automated railway lines, a whole bunch of stuff. Very, very cool indeed. Before we get going, I should point out that this video has been sponsored by the developer, uh, and I have a mission to try and showcase uh, exactly how the game is working and hopefully showcase some of the late game automation as well. Uh, so, we got a little cutscene here, just to get us oh, into hello. the you game. Must be my replacement. I'm Joseph. I've been the dispatcher here for over 30 years now. Excellent. I'm you today. It's good to meet you. Brilliant. This is the dispatch interface. Oh, don't worry. We're not very busy at the moment. Thank goodness. Of time to practice. Okay. Now so, um, I am actually going to be I'm actually going to be skipping forward because uh, it is it is relevant, but it's not super relevant to what I'm trying to uh, to, to discuss today. Um, I am going to, yeah, as I say, probably give you about a 15 minute uh, brief introduction to how the game is played. And then we're going to jump into uh, a little bit more late game content so that I can uh, so that I can show it off. So uh, first things first, what do we got? Well, we've got three train stations available at the moment. Um, we've got a little timetable down here. We've got a little overview panel. Uh, we have got our score, we have got our cash, and then we have also got experience points, which will allow us to interact with a very, very large tech tree. Now, the thing about tech in this game is that it can very, very, very radically uh, impact the the game. Um, it adds new, uh, new UI elements. Uh, it allows you to completely change the way that your network uh, operates. So it's very, very cool indeed. So we can see that we've got a train coming in here. Um, we can see that it's coming into this station here, which I dare not try and pronounce just in case I uh, I upset somebody. Uh, but yeah, we can accept it at platform two. That's fine. Uh, we accept it at platform two. Bada bim, bada boom. The train comes in. It's going to Bubney. And then it's going back to its station of origin. So what we can do, at least in the early stage of the game, is we can declare that, hey, this route, this route is good. This route is absolutely clean. Um, we we toggle the switch and we allow the train, uh, we allow the train to go. Now, uh, the train is not actually going to depart from the station until two minutes past eight. It's only 37 seconds past eight, uh, I guess, at the moment. So we still got a little bit of time before that happens. But basically, uh, we pop it into three times speeds. And there we go. At uh, two minutes past, if of course there is a uh, there's a green there's a green gate here, then we're gonna fly right to the end of the tracks, and hopefully at the end of the tracks we will be able to send the train back in the uh, other direction, which is exactly what I'm hopefully going to be able to do. So this is like the most basic mechanic of the way that the game operates. Um, it's very very it's very very simple, but there is very increasing levels of. Um, of, of complexity over the course of time uh, that will allow us to automate and make things much easier. We're going to manually tell the train to reverse. We can see because of the little headlight thing here. Uh, and we're actually going to send the train back to platform one as specified by the timetable. We could send it back to platform two, but we are going to get a penalty if we do that. And I don't particularly want to get a penalty. So uh, yeah, that's the way that we go about making money. Um, that is the way that you play the game. Obviously, you need to make sure that the lines work um, and you always have like infrastructure in place in order to make sure that the trains are able to get from one end of the track to the other uh, at their specified stations. Now, um, to do so, um, we can we can accept some more we can accept some more contracts. So, uh, what would I what would I like to accept here? Buy at least one platform in every contract station to operate. So yeah, we don't have a uh, pod pod. What is that pod pod Baba? I mean, up here. Um, if we wanted to get access to this station, we definitely could. Um, it would it would cost us a fair chunk of change. Uh, auto blocks are uh, locked at the moment, but that's not necessarily too problematic. But we can't actually we can't actually get uh, we can't actually get that uh, that uh, that contract opened up. What about this one? Uh, Hol Hol Where's where's this? It's up here. I mean that's definitely possible. Uh, but I think maybe let's just accept the the Bubney route. Let's do that. That sounds good. So we've got you that's coming in. Let's get the train in here. Let's set this up. Fantastic. And let's let you get let's let you get from one end of the the line to the other end of the line. Beautiful. So um, whenever we accept a contract, 
um, we get what's called a trial train. It's a contract reward. Uh, the contract, the reward for the contract will be calculated based on the average speed of this train. So it's pretty important that we try and get a, uh, a good service for this train specifically. We'll toggle that back over there and we'll reverse you. And we'll say that that one is ready to rock and roll. Can we take on anything else? Uh, I'll take on another contract. That's fine. Let's bring you in. I'm going to bring you in at station two right about now. Beautiful. Why are you not departing? Are you ready to depart? You're going to depart kind of soon, hopefully. I hope. When do you depart? You are going to depart at 18 minutes past. Uh, so we are going to have to wait, unfortunately, which is a little bit less than optimal because that's going to delay our contract. Uh, but that's fine. That's okay. It's not the end of the world. If it ends up happening, then it ends up happening. That's fine. Okay, contract conditions. That was for the previous train. Our performance, repeat every 60 minutes. That is fine. I'm very, very happy with that. I will take that. I will take that on board. Beautiful. Okay, let's get you reversed. Let's tell you to go. And there we go. Fantastic. Oh, hold on. You need to be going to... You need to be going to the wrong, uh, you're going to the wrong platform. Okay, whatever. It doesn't particularly matter. At the end of the day, as long as we're able to get, uh, to get the contract done, make a little bit of money, then, then we should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. It's a little bit less than, uh, less than optimal, but at the end of the day, it's, it's not the end of the world. Cool. Okay. So contracts begin, I believe, from the next day. Uh, we've accepted the, or we've got the maximum number of contracts offered, so let's decline that one. Uh, we've managed to get ourselves three training points, which is which is good, or three train points. So let's take you platform two. Let's go, beautiful. Let's get you into the station. Superb, and we'll get you departed. Now, um, we can buy sort of extra, we can buy extra stations, we can buy extra platforms, we can buy extra components that will allow us to access specific platforms. Let's get you back to here. Hold on, turn that off. And I need to get, I need to get that train, uh, I need to get that train reversed. There we go, get you reversed and away you go. Fantastic. Okay. Get you back to the platform and you can just chill out over there. Excellent. So yeah, what do we want to do? Do we want to buy out do we want to buy out any additional stations? I'm not particularly sure that we do. I mean, we can buy more additional track. We've not been offered any um any runs to the docks, but that's definitely something that I'd be interested in doing. Uh, we can also buy a whole bunch of different track controls. Um, manual sensors, for example, we can stick in um, at any point point we can sort of chain things we can chain signals together if that's something that we want to do um auto signals that's going to become very very important when we get that all up and running as well super looking forward to seeing how that all fits together as part of a train uh, rail infrastructure um if we go into the tech tree we can see we can auto accept trains i'm very interested in auto accepting trains let's see if we can try and get uh See if we can try and get some trains to auto accept. Yes, please. Let's go. Excellent. And more contracts. I feel like I'm taking on an unhealthy number of contracts, but that's okay. Um, yeah, Pod Pod Baba, you're over here. You're over here. We still can't. We still can't get that. We're gonna have to decline that. Decline that one as well. Decline that one as well. Decline that one as well. I mean, if we take on too many contracts, then we are obviously going to be in uh, in a bit of a bit of a problematic position. Uh, when's our train next due? Our train's next due. Oh, sorry, not the next day. The next hour. Okay, that's fine. We've got that to look forward to very, very soon. Uh, and we cannot do this one either, I don't think. Uh, where would we have to go? Where would we have to go? I feel like that's... I feel like that's going to be some somewhat of a ways away. Hey, look at that. We actually, we got some turnover. That's fantastic news. No, decline that one, decline that one. I'm scared. I'm scared of the fact that the the contracts will happen. Right. Um, where are the trains coming into? We've got trains coming in fairly soon, I do indeed believe. Coming in, uh, coming in right over here. You should be, you should be coming soon. There we go. It has arrived. So if I'm able to get one additional train, if I'm able to get one additional train or one additional contract, I should say, like you, yeah, I will accept that one.
Okay. I would like to accept you at platform two, but unfortunately, I don't think I can. Not until this one gets away. When? How long is this train going to be there for? Another 44 seconds. Yeah, unfortunately, we're going to have to accept you. Hmm. That's slightly problematic. That is slightly problematic indeed. And you are going to need to... You're going to need to chill over here. I tell you what, this is maybe a great opportunity to buy ourselves out another platform. Buy ourselves out another platform. Get a little bit of extra track infrastructure in here. Can we go from here over to here? I mean, we need to find... It's because it's it's because it's busy at the moment. That's the that's the crux of the that's the crux of the issue. Let's wait until we get Let's wait until we get this all freed up. Let's see if we can do something with that then. Yeah, there we go. That's exactly what I was hoping for. It was just because it was occupied previously. So, let's get you to go down here across like so and we will accept that. We will get you to reverse and then we will send you on your way back. Let's accept this train. Excellent. Got you coming in here. Fantastic. Get you up there. Nice. You're going to have to hold on there for a second, buddy. You're going to come down here. Excellent. Superb. Remember, I'm doing this I'm doing this contract to try and get myself one additional one additional tech point. Get you reversed manually. Don't worry. I mean, all of the sort of manual like reversing stuff, we are going to strip out basically immediately, which is what I'm really looking forward to doing. Right, that's our fifth That's our fifth point, by the way, which is nice. And you are going to go back up here. Excellent. Let's get you down here. Uh, that may very well be the wrong platform, but that's okay that I sent you to. Uh, whatever. It's, the, core, it's the, the cost of doing business. Let's get that over there. Brilliant. Fantastic. Okay, let us have a little look. Oh, that was just a trial train anyway. Beautiful. Um, let us have a little look at the tech tree and see what we want to get. So, an auto signal. I do like the idea of an auto signal. It's pretty cool because it allows us to create a route by setting every switch along a path to the next signal, which allows us to sort of chain signals together. As you can kind of see here, um, we can we can do it. It's very, very nice. Um, we can also just accept the... Uh, we can also do an auto toggle accept, which I'm going to take because it's pretty freaking fantastic. It's a, literally a new, a, a brand new uh, UI element. So we can toggle auto accept trains on and off, uh, which may end up being slightly problematic because of the fact that uh, some of my trains have been configured to go to different stations. But that's okay. Look at that train. It literally just, it came in exactly as it was supposed to fantastic really can't complain about it and let's get you heading off beautiful 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 so as you can see we're starting to chain together we're starting to chain together much larger networks and we're going to be able to do that we're going to be able to do that sort of sequentially now there is a whole bunch of additional automation that i have already alluded to and this is you know this is to be frank the very basic the very basic level of automation. Uh, so why don't we, why don't we spice things up and move over to something a little bit more sophisticated? So, ladies and gents, this is more sophisticated. This is probably about midway through the game in terms of the automative potential uh, that it has to offer. So first things first, you may notice that things are looking a little bit busy and a little bit funky. That's okay. It's okay. Calm yourself. I'll do my very best to explain what the heck is going on. So first things first, uh, we got a whole bunch of extra track. We got a whole bunch of extra stations. Uh, we got a whole bunch of extra little, little gizmos and gadgets gadgets littered around the map, uh, which I am about to explain. The most important, the most important difference between uh, between the uh, the initial little little setup that I showed you and this setup right here, uh, it's it's this little thing. It doesn't really look like it, but this thing is an absolute game changer. If we go into the um, 
if we go into the tech tree, we can actually see uh, in the automation section, there's a little section called the auto signal. Now, the auto signal might just very well be uh, the biggest chain, uh, game changer uh, in this game. It's the biggest bit of tech, certainly probably the most important bit of tech in terms of being able to effectively automate uh, a line. I'm going to very, very briefly show you um, this tech and, uh, and a few others just because they are unbelievably uh, important. So uh, what we do... Uh, is we we have uh, we have this little we have this little thing over here now in the case of the manual signal where you'd have to set hey look at that you'd have to set the whole route you'd have to do a bunch of clicks if you mess it up then you have to go round and round and round circles again and again and again um, whereas with the auto signal what we can do remarkably uh, we click the signal we click the destination it routes between them and what do you know it just freaking goes it just freaking goes look at that what a little what a great little bit of kit. So let's let you get into here. Uh, we will reverse you accordingly. Boom, click reverse. And then we will do exactly the same in the other direction. Fantastic. And what do you know? It works literally just like that. How unbelievably powerful is that? That is supremely, supremely, supremely cool. Um, I like it a lot. So uh, we've got all of those sort of working. And that means that everything is sort of um, is working as it should which makes me very, very happy indeed, uh, which is great. Now, there is another bit of kit that I'd like to show off. Um, there's this, this is very important to the, the ability to queue routing commands. Um, and uh, I can explain how that works uh, in a little bit, but it's not super important right now. Uh, there's two other bits of, bits of tech that I'd like to show off, although the arrival sensor is also very, very important. Um, what I would like to do, what I'd like to show off very briefly is the departure sensor and the sheer power um, that you have with uh, with this little this little gizmo. So uh, first thing to note is that they are built on the station so we can build them right here. Uh, we also have to upgrade the regular signal um, to a auto signal very very important. Uh, we're gonna exit the build menu. we're gonna click on the uh, the sensor here as you can see. it's got a little uh, little green line to sign uh, signify that it's linked to the uh, to the auto sensor. However, what we can do is we can actually we can actually test the trains based on their destinations. So uh, we can go into the route table. We can make up the route table, and the rule activates if the station matches the next station of the train. So we can say, hey, trains that are going to the west end over here are going to go to this track right there, uh, and we can actually do that. We can actually do the same, the exact same thing with central. We can say, hey, trains that are going to the west, uh, sorry, trains that are going to central can go up to this track. Um, and then we can also say uh, all others are going to come down here. And if, which we'll get into in a little bit, uh, we've got a coach yard or we've got a train that is terminating, uh, we can send the uh, we can send the train uh, the specific train to that um, to that coach yard as well. So uh, let us unpause and see exactly how this works. This is really where you start to realize, oh hey, uh, this game it's actually freaking magic. It's actually legitimately magic. So uh, as you can see, Southbridge West End, it's gone past the sensor. Boom! Look at that. It has automatically routed up to this section of track. Uh, and then we can uh, we can advise we can advise on what we're what we're doing what we're doing here now um, if what we wanted to do um, was to automate the arrival into the west end then what we would do is we'd stick an arrival sensor over here and we can we can link the arrival sensor to the uh, to the auto signal here and it will automatically route the train to the correct station if that makes sense so uh, you can kind of think of a like an arrival uh, sensor as like a I guess like a backwards departure sensor. Um, that's probably the best way of thinking about it. Either way, uh, look at that. It works. It works as it completely should. And what do you know? Look at that. The the auto signal has worked just perfectly as it should, which is great. That's really, really good. Uh, you've got nowhere to go. I will route you into here. Excellent. That is fine. And we will get our third, third and final going to the east end. Happy days. Look at that. Okay, so that's the second really, really important bit of kit that I wanted to show off. There is one more. Uh, we're going to go through it very, very briefly. It's a routing sensor. It kind of works. Um, it it kind of works exactly like a departure sensor, although it is very, very important in and of its own right. So let's get the routing sensor built over there. Uh, we can configure it to link to uh, this auto sensor here, and we can say... Um, for example, 
Uh, if we want to route to the West End, we can connect up to here. Uh, if we want to route to the Central, we can send up here. And if we want to route to uh, East End, we can send over here. But we could also send like up there, but whatever. That doesn't particularly matter. That's how the routing sensor works. It's also really, really powerful. And so with that, I feel like that probably uh, encapsulates the vast majority of the changes that have been made um, to this map specifically. Now, accordingly, uh, most things should be running uh, with relative with relative ease and I guess with relatively with relatively significant levels of automation. However, my intervention is definitely going to be uh, required in a couple of different places. Um, and it's worth noting, by the way, like straight away, that my ability to determine problems um, will depend entirely upon this little uh, this little overview screen. And I need to try and stay on top of exactly what the heck is happening. So um, what's going on over here? You've got 19, you've got 17 seconds until you depart. You are due in the next station, but you can't depart. I also should point out there's a couple of other um, advanced bits of kits here uh, for example these are auto blocks you have to unlock them um, we can unlock them over here if we wanted to um, I believe it's this one yeah auto blocks we'd have to unlock those in order to get that all up and running we've got tunnels there's quite a lot of tunnels um, which you can see if I if I uh, if I highlight over them that is definitely noteworthy. So uh, most of the routes and most of the contracts that we've got at the moment should be configured to work uh, as they currently are. However, if I go into contracts here, uh, let's see if we can maybe make this one happen. This is an intercity service. Uh, let's have a little look. It's going to go from Pod Podbaba over to Wilson Station over here and then over to, where is this? Uh, Bet Betchevice. Betchevice. Okay, uh, I tell you what, let's let's accept it. Um, do I have anything else due in? I do not. Right, so we'll accept it. Uh, we will accept it on uh, we will accept it on platform two. Uh, we're gonna have to wait until oh that's a sh that's a shame. Uh, we're gonna have to wait until this train has actually left the station for Bubney because you are not due. You're not due to leave for another hour. That's very very inconvenient. Not the end of the world necessarily, but. You know, we'll start to we'll start to see exactly what the heck is going on. Um, now, does my does my does my routing sensor? Um, it does not have. In fact, actually, yeah, it routes everything through here, which is fine. We have got a routing sensor which routes things specifically to Bubney, um, Dej Dejvice. I I don't even want to I don't even want to say that. Um, you're going to Wilson Station, so though, do we have a, a route to Wilson Station? We don't actually. That's quite handy. So let's see how we would get to Wilson Station. Now, again, because I didn't specifically design uh, this uh, this layout, uh, we're going to select Wilson Station over here. So I think I think there is a route that I think there is a route that definitely makes this work. Um, let's sort of try and trace it back a little bit. Uh, where is it? Yeah, select select connection. Where do we want to go? So we could send down here. We'd send down here, then through to through to Bubney. Alternatively, alternatively, we can create a brand new sort of bypass route. Um, it looks like we're going to have to go via somewhere else, which is not necessarily the end of the world. Like we can definitely go, we can definitely go via via somewhere else. But I'd rather I'd rather not. Uh, Bubney, and then okay, sure. I guess let's go. I guess let's go down here. What about what about this? This this routes to this routes to just just down there. What about down here? You can go. You don't go to thingy. You don't go to where I'm looking for. You don't go where I'm looking for. Okay. I mean, yeah. So the departure sensor clearly, uh, or the routing sensor, I should say here, clearly needs to be changed in such a way. Um, that we will delete. We will delete Wilson Station. Right. Let's wait for you to leave first because there's no point. There's no point in. There's no point in aggravating in aggravating that unnecessarily. Now, I should point out, by the way, that we are somewhat limited, um, not necessarily by money. We've got plenty of money. We're limited in terms of the fact that we are only allowed to build um, build tracks in very specific places. Um, so as much as I would like to sort of build up here, uh, we can't actually build like further around this area that um, that we that we can see these sort of little little lines for. So we're somewhat limited with regards to that. Right. Let's get you out of the station here. Let's get you out of the station. Let's take you on platform two as soon as I possibly can. 
There we go. Let's get you in here and let's start talking about exactly um, exactly what our what our options are. You're running a little bit late, but I'm 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 fine with that. It is maybe a trial contract, so that's a little bit embarrassing, but that is fine. So yeah, we can still we can still route to we can still route to there. That is fine as it as it is. Um, let's, 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 let's have another little, let's have another little look. I mean, we could route to, we could route to Holsvis, and then what about round here? Something, something around here. Yeah, that's actually, that's actually kind of perfect. So, let's say, Wilson Station. Yep, brilliant. And we're going to select the connection of this line right here, and it should, theoretically... Um, be able to go right through. So you uh, set to here. We can set uh, Wilson Station. Beautiful. Select the connection. Select this connection right here. And we should be able to go, I believe. There we go. Fantastic. Let's rock and roll. So the routing sensor should theoretically route us in the right direction. Now, it may look deceptively, it may look deceptively uh, large here, but um, it's actually, there's quite a lot of, there's quite a lot of trains packed in here. Anyway, uh, this train, we're going to follow this train around because it is very, very important to me that we get our train to its destination in a good and timely fashion. So, you're going to continue going because you're not actually going to stop at, uh, what is that, whole, whole service? Sure, we're going to continue to go around here. Keep it coming. That is marvelous. Good stuff indeed. And I believe, hopefully, because the routing sensors should be configured in such a way along this route already, that we should have the ability to hopefully see this train arrive at its destination. Now, no doubt there's going to be a couple of, um, of issues uh, on this network, but I'm hopeful that if we're able to use the existing sort of infrastructure that we've got set up... Uh, by the way, these signals are all sort of chained together so that they're all, you know in infinite loops, so to speak. That's the sort of perpetual loops that I was um, that I was sort of chatting about. Uh, we're able to utilize, certainly um, to our to the best of our ability, uh, all of the uh, all of the existing infrastructure that we've got set up over here. So yeah, very, very cool the fact that we're able to do this. Where's that where's that train gone? Where's that train gone? It's uh, it's disappeared. It's in the tunnel, but it's back now. Beautiful. So you're coming around here. You're coming around at a very, very decent pace. As you can see, there is an order queued up. That order should theoretically be dispatched as soon as the train that is currently in the tunnel here finishes up moving through. And boom, indeed, that is the case. Fantastic. Here it comes. That is marvelous. So uh, that's that's excellent. That looks really, really good. That looks really, really good. Very, very happy with that. Uh, let's see the next sort of piece of the puzzle. Wilson Station. Oh yeah, that's actually an interesting thing to note. So it stopped at the signal. Now we haven't actually, um, we haven't actually, we haven't actually told the, this is the arrival sensor that I was chatting about. We haven't actually told the arrival sensor where we would like this train to go. So I'm going to manually tell it to go to, in fact, I tell you what, let's check out the, let's check out the departure settings. Others to Wilson Station, Wilson Station. Uh, we got a routing sensor over here, which routes to uh, there. Everything routes to there, and then it's sort of all on the way around. And then this is the route sensor, which has got specific uh, specific routing to different towns that sort of sets sets it up from here. So this is like the main point. So everything in this station routes to this route on the out, and then this is the auto signal uh, that that determines exactly where we're going to go. So, um, what we're going to do is we are going to, let's say, um, we'll route you for now over to platform number one. I mean, it really doesn't matter, but what you would like to do, ideally, is you would like to determine um, which platforms you are using with regularity, which ones you're using sort of more infrequently. And, you know, you'd want to maybe have all of your intercity um, stops, um, you know, stopping at one specific station or or somewhere else. You'd, you know, you might want to you might want to have some sort of logic to it. For, whereas for now, I'm just sort of doing I'm just sort of doing this. So you are going to arrive uh, at Wilson Station any um, you're going to boom, you're going to always arrive at one. You're going to stick around for another uh, two minutes or so, and you are going to you're going to go back uh, over there, which is not exactly what I figured that you would do. Although, if you're going to do that, then I guess that's fine. 
Okay, apparently, apparently that's fine. Okay, so the single signal is linked to to return rather than to to root up, I guess. Okay, I mean it's fine. It literally it literally makes no difference to me. Uh, so what did, where are we going? Uh, Betch of ice, sure. Is that LinkedIn? That is LinkedIn. Okay, that is fantastic. If we hover over this, in fact, where is Betch of ice? It's over here. So we can see the yeah. There we go. It's linked over there. The track that it's being told to go to is over here. That is marvelous. There is a, another routing sensor over here, which is going to route it towards the next one, which is brilliant. It's going to route it literally through Liban, exactly what we did up at Holosovis, uh, up at the top there. And that is going to be that is going to be pretty freaking fantastic in terms of just doing exactly what we want, exactly what we want it to do. It should just continue down here, and we should have no further issues. It is just chilling. Should be passing through, going at 30 kilometers an hour again. That's fine. The control unit is not at the front, which I think limits the speed, uh, which is maybe, I guess, an advantage for going the long way around rather than specifically, you know, uh, reversing in there. But uh, I, I guess, you know, for demonstration purposes, it's not um, it's not hugely important. Right. So again, we're going to come through these auto blocks over here, and we're probably going to be stuck with the same sort of um, the same sort of issue uh, where. Oh, I tell you what, it's literally gonna it's literally gonna rock us right into platform two here, which is even better. You love to see it. Although these are some pretty substantial auto blocks, actually. Wow, it takes a long time. I guess this is a I guess this is a big I guess this is a big area. Fine, okay. That's a it's a long there's a long distance between between the two areas. And boom, what do you know? Uh, we have arrived at our destination using all of the tools that are available to us in terms of automation. Very, very cool indeed. So, a couple of other things to say. Whilst that has been, um, whilst that has been happening, I think that was this train that we did. Yeah, that was the train that we did, which I believe, uh, which we, which we've just completed. Very, very nice indeed. Uh, there is a bunch of trains that are um, that are not getting dispatched at the moment. Uh, specifically, uh, that is because of a mechanic called coach yards, um, which is. Let me have a little look. It is. Where is that? It's not in. It's not in contracts. It is in contracts. It's Coachyard. I thought it was in contracts. Coachyards, uh, which are very, very cool, which I'm going to be exploring in the next episode. Uh, it allows us to actually stable trains. So it allows us to have trains that are sort of anchored uh, and dispatched from a specific point in the map rather than just disappearing off the edge, much like these trains, which we can accept on any sort of given platform. Uh, it's actually going to allow us to, uh, it's actually going to allow us to keep the trains, keep them warm, keep them running, and then immediately sort of reintroduce them uh, back into uh, back into the into the sort of system. So there we go. Yeah, taking a train through its paces. Lots more to come. We're going to be checking out a map that is even more automated, even more bigger, even crazier, and even more capable of uh, of delivering profits and science and. Ah, oh, progress. We love progress. We love progress in Railroad. That's for darn sure. Uh, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to wrap this one up right about now. Thank you ever so much for watching. My name, of course, has been Obito Potato. Uh, do, please, stay tuned for the next episode. Get subscribed for that because it's coming real, real soon indeed. Check out Railroad, and thanks again to the developers for sponsoring this video uh, and the next one. It is greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll see you next time. Bye.